What's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. This is the one month review of the Copa Pure 2 Plus in this beautiful blue colorway. Let's get started with the sole plate. Now, if you guys watched my previous video on the 0.1 model of this generation of Copa Pure, especially the one month review, the score for the sole plate is gonna remain the same. I really like this torsion frame. I think it's really nice and neutral, really no BS. I don't think it's overly flexible. It gives you a good amount of snapback, but it's not like too aggressive like some of their Carbotex insert sole plates. Uh, and for me, this is kind of the perfect combination for artificial ground and firm ground. I've worn it on both. Uh, I wore it several times in training last year for Flower City, and this uh, sole plate performed really, really well. So the sole plate for the Copa Pure 2 Plus is gonna get an eight out of 10. Now moving on to the heel area. Now the heel area is the biggest disappointment for me for this entire football boot. It'll be by far the lowest rating of all of my numbers for this football boot, particularly because the heel area on the point one was actually so much better than the first generation of the Copa Pier. And this is where they really screwed up, I think. They missed an opportunity to make this football boot very, very good and competitive. And I think the heel area just absolutely killed it for me. And in a lot of ways, that's why I'm, if I absolutely had to pick, I'm gonna pick the point one model over the plus model, even though I, from a technical perspective, I actually like this boot a lot better. I really love the way the knit feels in the midfoot and really gives you that nice bit of hug, but the heel just kills it for me. I don't know why Adidas didn't decide to just do the same heel area as the point one model. I think it would have made a far superior boot with a lot better lockdown experience. And so for me, the heel area is gonna get a four out of 10. The upper for the Copa Pure 2 Plus is pretty good. The reason it's not gonna get great remarks is because for me, it's not what I'm typically looking for in a football boot. Even if I am looking for a leather football boot, I'm often looking for something that's a little bit more thin or is like mega premium like a Morelia 2 made in Japan. This is sort of in that awkward middle stage where they've got a really nice and soft forefoot in that calfskin, calfskin leather. They've done a nice job treating it. It feels really nice, but the midfoot feels a little bit disconnected from the ball in a lot of ways. I like passing. I like, you know, first touch with the upper. I think the knit material here with this prime knit in the lacing system area does a really nice job of wrapping your foot pretty seamlessly. So from that perspective, it actually fits pretty well overall, and that'll be reflective in the shape and fit conversation and rating. But for me, the upper just lacks that little bit of of ping when you're slapping the ball cross field or you're getting a really nice bended shot or you're doing something that you really want kind of a, a full spectrum feel and no BS on your feet. So for me, it's gonna get slightly higher rating than the 0.1 model simply because I really do like the knit and I think it just adds to the overall seamless experience of the football boot. So it's gonna get a seven out of 10 for the upper. Lockdown for the two plus is another disappointment and it all comes down to that heel area. I really think, I'm gonna say it over and over again, I really think they missed an opportunity with this football boot. I think for the most part, yes, it's not what I'm looking for, but if they had put the heel area of the .1 on this boot, I think this boot would have gotten much better ratings overall. And the issue is that lockdown in the heel is very important because number one, if you don't have lockdown in the heel, you get blisters. And if you don't have lockdown in the heel, you also start to slip back and forth, which then makes your midfoot slip. And then your toes get all weird. And it's a, it, it's sort of a cascading effect throughout the entire boot, especially because having heel lockdown really means that you can kind of stick your forefoot studs in and pivot without having to worry that your ankle is gonna get into weird and awkward positions. So for me, the heel area, really affects this lockdown score. And the lockdown score is even worse than the 0.1 model, which is kind of weird because you've got the knit and theoretically this should be more locked in. The lockdown in like high performance training sessions was pretty poor. So for me, it's gonna get a six out of 10. Breaking time was another aspect of the boot that I wasn't sort of expecting to be as bad as it was. Context, I have really wide forefoot, really wide midfoot and a pretty thin heel area. So for me, it often, this midfoot area, especially if you're looking at Adidas football boots, Adidas football boots tend to have a pretty okay heel area as far as width goes. They're fairly average, a, a fairly thin midfoot and then a pretty wide and bulbous toe box area. And that's pretty consistent throughout the Predator line as well as the Speed Portal and now the Crazy Fast line. So all of those shapes are pretty much the same overall if you look at those models 
compared to let's say like Nike models or uh, Puma models or New Balance models that are a lot more kind of streamlined and more neutral in shape. So what that does for me is it causes a ton of issues right in this area. So about mm, maybe two thirds from toe all the way down. And for me, the break-in time just really struggled. I probably had to wear these for a good like 10 to 12 hours of like proper wear time while also dealing with some of the issues with the heel lockdown. So for me, break-in time was a four out of 10. Durability and build quality is actually quite good. I found that playing on FG surfaces, no issues, obviously. When you play on natural grass surfaces, boots tend to last much longer just in general. And then on AG pitches, I actually found these to be really, really good as far as durability and build quality. Kind of surprising actually, given uh, that some of the other Adidas models tend to rip and stuff, especially those uh, crazy fast pluses that I had, they ripped within the first session or two. And yes, I get it, they're super paper thin and all that stuff, but these were miles and miles and miles better than that. And so I think Adidas is definitely on the right track for most of their boots as far as durability and build quality. So for me, these are getting an eight out of 10. As far as shape and fit goes for the Copa Pure 2 Plus, I find that it's fine. As I mentioned two sections ago now, with the way that Adidas boots are shaped, it's pretty hard for me to break in this midfoot area. The heels are kind of hit or miss depending on, on the model for me. And so from a shape and fit perspective for my foot shape, they're not the best on the market. I find New Balance to be much more comfortable. I found, find the you know GX2 to be much more comfortable. And as far as leather boots go, we'll talk about competition in the next section. You guys will understand kind of where I stack these up and, and why I pick those other models. Mizuno is another great example of boots that just kind of fit the shape of, general shape of my foot a lot better. So for me, the shape and fit of these are a six out of 10. Competition for these has gotten a lot better since models like the Tiempo and the Puma King and some of these other sort of what used to be leather models are now going into a synthetic. And so for these to actually compete, quote unquote, with the other leather boots on the market, they're now competing. Sure, you could say they compete with New Balance 442, which is more of a budget model, but for the most part at this price point, especially if you buy them brand new without any discounts or anything, you're now talking in the category of um, Adler Japan boots, you're talking Asics leather football boots in certain areas of the world, you're talking Mizuno, elite models and made in Japan models, obviously made in Japan are kind of in their own league. Um, and so you really got some pretty tough competition. Now, where did these stack up? As I said before, the 0.1 model is gonna be my favorite out of the two from the Adidas brand, as far as Adidas leather boots go. I'm actually gonna pick the New Balance 442 over this any day because it's thinner, I think it fits better, the shape is more neutral, and it just it's actually a lot lighter as well, and, and I think just fits my playing style a little bit better. So 442 is going above these. I think these are going below all of the Made in Japan models, all of the Mizuno Elite models. Like I would say, if you're on the market for these, look at the Morelia Neo 4 or Neo 4 Beta Elites, not the Made in Japan models, because you can get something that's in my opinion, better in every way in this boot, but in a Mizuno package, in a package that's probably gonna last you a lot longer, which is a really big thing for a lot of people. So, and then Adler boots, different class. Obviously they're up there with made in Japan Mizuno quality products for me. And so those are definitely going above these. So the unfortunate part is that these probably would have competed pretty well with Puma King when they were leather and the Tiempo when they were leather. But the issue is that those aren't leather anymore. And so now these have to compete with the actual leather boots on the market, which are far superior in my opinion to the Copa Pure 2 Plus. So unfortunately, these are going towards the bottom of the ranking system as far as competition goes. Performance was fine. It's about dead average for me. As I said before, the feeling's not really what I'm looking for. The fit is nice. It is cushioned. It is comfortable once you break them in, but that's once you break them in and it took me a while to break them in. That being said, as an overall product, I think if you have a fairly neutral shaped foot and you don't, you don't have something like me where you've got really thin parts of your foot and really wide parts of your foot, if you're fairly neutral and pretty flat as far as you know the width of your heel compared to the width of your midfoot and the width of your forefoot, I actually think this will be a great product for a lot of people. And I think a lot of people are gonna fit in these really well. And so that's actually gonna bump my score up a little bit because I do understand that this boot is probably gonna be really popular for a lot of people. It's just not my cup of tea, which is why it is uh, sort of 
why the ratings are the way they are. And again, it's a subjective thing. I'm just rating it on my own experience and hopefully giving you guys the most um, sort of subjective and also like objective from a playing experience uh, in these football boots. So for me, these are gonna get a pretty dead average rating of seven out of 10 for, for performance. Overall, the Copa Pure 2 Plus is a, eh, it's an eh product. Yes, I do think it's gonna be really nice for some people, but I think for the majority, I would honestly say, go with a Mizuno Elite model, go with a New Balance 442, you'll save like $100 compared to these and you'll be just as comfortable in those, if not more comfortable. I think these offer a lot of really interesting things that should make it really nice. Fusion skin feels really good, but it's a little too thick. The calf skin leather in the forefoot feels really, really nice, but it just is that little bit disconnected. Maybe it's because it lacks any stitching or anything, I don't know. The knit feels great. That's an awesome piece that I really love. They're taking you know, design language elements from the Morelia Neo Beta lines. The heel area sucks. It just sucks. I, I don't know why they decided to make it the same as the first generation or like a hybrid of the first generation and something that they thought was gonna be good. Adidas needs to fix the heel area. If they fix the heel area, I think this product would be so much better in like four of the categories that all ranked under a seven. Seven is like benchmark, yeah, these football boots are pretty good. Okay, yeah, average, nice. Anything below a seven, your sixes, your fives, your fours, at least in my ranking scale, that sucks. That's like, that's really hard to kind of redeem yourself from and so from my perspective the overall rating of these is going to be a six out of ten i just don't think these, these are it and i think you have so many other better options on the market that are going to give you a much better feel on feet either you're going to get a more padded feel if the padded feel is what you're looking for from like a morelia 2 made in japan whereas if you want a little bit of a thinner and more connected sensation but you still want that leather you go with a new balance 442 and save some money you save some money and go with a morelia you know, Neo series in the elite models, or if you want the best of the best, you go with the Made in Japan Mizunos, right? Or you switch gears and you go with Asics, which are a similar design language from a synthetic midfoot leather forefoot, and you get a better product, period, no matter which model you pick, whether it's the Ultreza 3, whether it's the XFly 5 or XFly 5 or XFly Pro 2 or XFly 5. All of those products in the Asics lineup are better than these. And so that's where this product, six out of 10, really not my thing and uh it's a bummer because i wanted to like these i really wanted to like the updated version especially with the new prime knit in the uh in the lacing system area but unfortunately that's just how it rolls when you have um yeah i guess you have so much to compare it to right and so much good quality football boots to compare it to as well so hope you guys enjoyed that review if you did hit that like button let me know down in the comment section below for each of my rating systems what would you rate the copa pure 2 plus in uh, in my ranking systems go through see those categories write those down write your own ratings and i want to see who has all the different ratings and who's actually tried these football boots if you haven't tried these football boots you can't comment that but if you haven't tried them comment down below if you actually do want to try these or not and let me know down in the comment section below. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Join the fam. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see y'all in the next video.